Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Today's video is about how to overcome the challenge of not having enough compost and sharing seven tricks to do so. So the first strategy of dealing with a lack of compost is to actually consider having a break here. This is a year where you don't actually add any compost onto the bed. You just utilize whatever's already in the ground. And that's exactly what I'm doing with this bed. And as you can see, all the plants are looking pretty healthy. This isn't really a technique that you can apply starting from today because we're in the middle of the season here in the UK. But what you can do is actually use it as a principle moving forward. So usually I will mulch most of my beds in autumn, finish them off in spring. But if there's a few where I think actually they were really healthy, if the soil looks good, you could actually skip a year and save the amount of compost you need to mulch your garden. I think every garden has beds where we're just really happy with the quality of the soil and others not so. Here's an example of one that I'm not so happy. So rather than trying to grow really hungry crops that need a lot of nutrition like cauliflowers and then all the fruiting crops like squash and tomatoes, what I'm actually doing in this bed is I'm gonna be dedicating it to crops that, that need less fertility. Legumes are a great example. These are actually field beans. These are designed to be planted out on a big field, not in like a really compost rich raised bed. So actually adapting the type of crops that you grow to suit poorer soils. I'm gonna be growing a lot more kind of more leafy greens here as well and then applying just a little bit of liquid fertilizer to help them that's a really simple way to actually turn the issue of low quality soil into actually just change what crops you grow in there so when you apply compost to a bed what you're doing is you're adding carbon microbes and nutrients but all this compost was just plants that have broken down. But you can actually skip making compost by using a technique called chop, move and drop, which adds microbes, nutrients and carbon to the soil, but it breaks down on the soil rather than waiting in a compost bin for a few months. So chop, move and drop utilizes the fact that there's nutrients around the area. This country here is a perfect example. I'm gonna chop it down and take it and put it over the bed. And that's gonna add a load of nutrients to kind of supplement compost because this will break down into compost anyway. So what actually happens is when you put cut plant material like this directly on the surface of the soil, and here I'm mulching a nicely advanced tomato plant, it breaks down a lot faster than in a compost bin and the nutrients are there. So as you start watering them and it breaks down, you can bring them down into the roots. Now you might notice that these tomatoes are also mulched with grass clippings and that brings us on to the next trick. The more seasons I do in the garden, the more I fall in love with grass clippings and it's using grass clippings from grass that hasn't yet gone to seed, otherwise you'll be basically spreading future lawns around. But grass clippings are amazing. It's, it's a very similar technique to chop, move and drop. But what you are actually doing is the emphasis of the grass clippings is also on retaining moisture. And retaining moisture in the soil is beneficial for so many ways, as we know, we don't want the plants drying out. But it's also beneficial for the microbes in the soil to have that moisture, to stay alive, or at least stay active, and help provide plants with nutrients. And then of course, as a final benefit, as these grass clippings break down, they're providing a really nice amount of nutrients and also carbon to the soil, which in turn helps to increase the soil health and increase the amount of water the soil can hold on to. When you apply grass clippings to your garden, it actually depends how slug prone your climate is, depending on the layer that you want to add. So we're really fortunate in this garden with barely any slug problems whatsoever. So I do go around and make kind of two to three centimetre deep mulches with grass clippings, which makes a big difference. But if you do have a lot of slugs, going for around a centimetre will help reduce any potential slug issues, but still allow you to benefit from using grass clippings. Another trick to help 
overcome an issue of not having enough compost is to actually water your plants with a Jadam microbial solution. I recently made a short about showing how simple it is to make Jadam microbial solution. You use leaf moulds, potatoes and sea salt and it works really, really well and it's really simple. And what you're doing is you're inoculating and propagating a load of negative microbes from leaf mould and from your area and then you're watering your beds with that. And what you do is you provide a big boost of microbes not just to help increase overall soil health and the health of your plants, but also to help kickstart microbial activity and the breakdown of nutrients to make them plant available. So what you're actually doing is similar to just adding compost, but you're just adding microbes to help get more of those nutrients that's already in the soil, more plants available to help those plants and bypass the need for as much compost when times are tough. So if you can get into a habit of just applying JMS once a month around your garden beds, especially prioritizing poorer beds, it's gonna make a really big difference to your plant health and future soil health. Now there's another way that watering can help you overcome the challenge of a lack of compost, but we'll come on to that after the next tip. So another little trick you can do is actually an adaptation of trench composting. This is usually where you bury kitchen scraps in a trench, cover with soil and then plant on top. You can actually do this for individual plants. So what I'm going to do is create a fairly deep hole, much deeper than uh, this dwarf bean here. And I've got some scraps that I'm going to place at the bottom. And then I'm going to put a tiny bit of compost over the top and then I now transplant the plant. And what that does is as the roots start working downwards and as the plants, the plant matter underneath starts to break down, it's gonna help provide the nutrients and just what this plant needs. We're behind the polycrub and this is our main fermentation station. We're actually creating a lot of liquid feeds here, all crop specific. This is Swede, for example. We've got then more general multi-purpose ones like nettles and grass clippings. But Jordan liquid fertilizer is such an easy way of creating a really beneficial plant amendment and soil amendment just using stuff that you have and you inoculate it with leaf mold. And then you just dilute it and water it to your plants. This here is a Jadam liquid fertilizer. It's something that you can scale and I am gonna do a dedicated video about it, I promise. This is a, a grass clipping one that we've had for about a month now and you can see that really dark color. So what I'm basically doing is diluting it one to 30, one to 40 in a watering can and I'm watering my plants. Now, grass clippings and grass is the easiest one to get started with. And this video right here is going to show you everything you need to know to make your own Jadam liquid grass fertilizer today to help your plants and your garden from two weeks from now.